Marilyn, uh, you faced a couple of external crises in your time at uh, the head of Carlson. Uh, I remember after uh, September 11, 2001, some eight years ago, uh, the travel business kind of shut down. You're a global hospitality provider, and people weren't flying all over the world to travel, and the business had been pretty good in the 90s. But let's go back to 2001. How did you deal with that in the aftermath of September 11 as a leader? That was, I think, one of the, the definition you had of crises where it was difficult, but in some ways it was easy. It was, I, came, I arrived at our towers, um, heard the news on my way in, got there, it was total confusion. And at one point when I spoke at one of Bill's leadership classes at Harvard, he had sent me something, um, one of the readings for the class, and it talked about how a leader can have a consistent point of view and a consistent value set, but apply different styles at different moments. And that moment, arriving that morning, it was a command and control moment. There was total confusion. Um, the talented people, the, the, uh, the, the executives, the, the, there just wasn't a sense of any order. So the first thing that was called on was to say, okay, anybody who's worried about a child or a family, go home. Anybody who's willing or able to stay and help us deal with this problem, stay here. Then we had people in you know, several thousand people who were still left. Sent everybody to conference rooms and said, start thinking about what assets we have, what skills we have, what services we have that can be part of the solution. That kind of calmed everyone down. Suddenly we were collectively looking at what we could do. I'm not sure we ever even sort of pulled that all together, but the point was everyone and started thinking about what we might do. All that had gone before um, was what made us successful through that because we had created a culture and a context where values were explicit. We had hired to that value set. We had retained people. We had rewarded and recognized people according both to performance and stewardship, which is a word in a private company that we use probably more than public companies. And we said, if we can't speak to you, um, and if you're running a hotel, you're running a, a travel, a, a travel connectivity, whatever your role, a restaurant, um, as long as you live by our values, our credo, uh, whatever, wherever you go, go as a leader. Whatever you do, do with integrity. Whomever you serve, serve with caring. Whenever you dream and innovate, dream with your all and never ever give up. We just said, you know the credo. We had taught the credo in every country that we um, uh, work in. We also then said, these are your priorities. Take care of your own people. Take care of your customers. Take care of our competitors' customers. And that was a kind of value statement in its own, but we realized that we had unique skills to get people home or to provide food for them and to provide beds for them if they were um, caught somewhere else in the world and then finally to take care of your community. And if you do that, you will not be second-guessed and you will not be criticized for whatever decisions you made. Uh, Napoleon is said to have wanted every one of his foot soldiers to feel that they had a marshal's baton in their knapsack because he wanted them to know that if everyone around them fell, they could take that field marshal's baton out and they could lead. And I think if we as leaders can give people that sense of empowerment within a context of values, within some well-communicated and well-lived, um, trusted environment, that they won't let you down. And, and what our people did was extraordinary. They turned the ballroom that was right next to the towers, the one of the most arguably beautiful ballrooms in New York, into a station for the firemen and the policemen, and they found, um, and they found ways to make menus at Fridays go farther and farther and get food to some of the people who were stranded. They put beds in hotel rooms, and you know it it was um, it was extraordinary. And I think that they took very good care of our competitor, our Carlson Bagman Lee, head-to-head -head competitor Amex. Um, was in the tower, and we took care of their clients happily. And I really think it was all that had gone before that created the culture that was the context for their decision making. So, like David, you really talk about the benefit of preparation, but like Ann, 
you're also saying, I think I hear you saying it, that in a crisis, the rule book goes out the window. There is no cookbook that you can follow, but that if people know what the organization stands for, what its values are, that they'll figure it out. Right. I, I think the book doesn't go out, just several chapters do. <laughs> <laughs>